What's happening? Hello world and welcome to your 30th. Wow, 30. That's that's a that's a feat. We're getting there. We're getting there. Welcome to your 30th SQL Server tutorial. Today I'm going to be talking to you about joins using inner joins and outer joins specifically. Now I know I said I wasn't going to be talking too much. It was going to become more of a showing less of explaining, but when dealing with stuff like joins and different T-SQL functions and whatnot, there's going to have to be some explaining, obviously. So, with that, so far in the last few tutorials, you focus primarily on retrieving data from a single table in practice, it's highly unlikely, though, that your queries will reference just one table. Most of the time, you will be required to return data from multiple tables. To do this, you use the join operator. While there are several types of joins, we're going to be focusing primarily on inner joins, left outer joins, and right outer joins right now. So, to start using the inner join of the three most commonly used join operators inner join is the one that you will likely use on a regular basis the inner join is an equality match between two or more tables for example say you have a table that contains products and another that contains sales and you want to find only the products that have been sold basically you're looking for the intersection of the two tables on some value. Okay. Now, what we have right here, this is the join syntax. Regardless of whether you're writing an inner join or an outer join, you start with a basic select statement right here. You'll use the following query as your starting point. So, go ahead and there we go. That's what happens. Now, the table in the from clause should include a column with values that exist in the table you plan on joining. In this case, you would like to include an email address in the result set. To accomplish this, you must reference a second table in the query. So I'll show you how to do that. Now, we go right here, and this is the script I want for that. Alrighty. Rid of that. And there we go. You see we have the email addresses here. Pretty cool. Um, the inner join keywords have been included, which allows you to specify a second table in the query. The inner join or any join must be coupled with the on keyword. In the on clause, you specify which column or columns will be used to connect join the two tables. The key to successfully joining any two tables is to identify their intersecting data, which is commonly aligned across primary key and foreign key relationships. Okay, on uh, something to note, you can join multiple tables in one select statement by including additional join and on coupling. Alright, so now we're going to write an inner join query. Okay, get rid of this guy, we don't need him anymore. Go to new query. Okay, now let's go grab the code we need right here. Copy that, go back to our query editor, paste that in, go ahead and copy that down, and we can see right here we have the inner join. That's pretty cool, huh? So, now we have just used that query to perform an inner join on those two tables. And then, uh, now we're going to be covering outer joins, okay? There are two basic types of outer joins. You have your left outer join and your right outer join. They both provide very similar functionality 
but there is a slight difference that depends on the order of the tables in the query. Using the previous product sales example, if you begin reading the query from left to right, which table do you first encounter? You encounter the production.product table, which makes it the left table. The second table you encounter, continuing to read to the right, is sales.salesorderdetail, the right table. The trend continues throughout the query. Therefore, if you want to retrieve a list of products, regardless of their existence in the sales.salesorderdetail table, a left outer join should be your choice. On the other hand, if you are trying to retrieve all sales, whether or not they are associated with the product, you should choose a right outer join. Regardless of the type of outer join, the syntax is similar to that of an inner join. You replace inner with either left outer or right outer. So now let's go ahead and write an outer join query. Alright, get rid of this because we don't need it. Okay, actually, I just realized we need that last bit of code that I just got rid of. So, what we're going to do is just simply go back, grab it again. Okay. We'll execute this again. So, I apologize if you have to do this a second time if you didn't, because I told you to X out of it. Execute it. Okay. Now, we're ready to begin because we're going, we can... Uh, erase this code out of here and I'm going to grab my new example I want to show you right here alright go back go ahead and copy this down And execute. Okay, so and so as you can see below here, um, the following image here shows the results of the left outer join query. Now, if you scroll down the result set, see all the way down, you'll start to see nulls. See, boom, bang, boom. So you start to see the null values in those columns that are part of the sales.salesorderdetail table. This is a direct result of using an outer join. So recall that, um, actually no I didn't cover that, so yeah, but anyways, that's all I wanted to show you for now. I'll save what it, the thought I just had for another tutorial and uh, in the next tutorial I think I'm going to be covering limiting the data returned in your result set using top, the top keyword. So thanks for watching. See you in the next tutorial.